on this episode of Marshall and Amy. Okay, we finally made it to Gyeongbokgung Palace. And most importantly, it's where they created the Hangul alphabet. We like obnoxiously loved it. It just gives me like the perfect little warm feeling inside. So we are in the Bukchon Hanok village. We finally made it to Gyeongbokgung Palace, which is the largest and grandest of all the palaces here in Seoul. It's also known as the Northern Palace because it's the furthest north. And we're so excited to explore and see the cultural side of Korea that we haven't really explored yet. It's a beautiful day today too. It's a weekday, so it's a little less busy. It's nice and cool out. There's some clouds in the sky blocking the sun. There's not very many people here. We came on a weekday in the morning and it's just beautiful. This is gonna be a fun, fun day. So I just found out my entire life that we have been living in the past <laughs> because we just rented an audio guide with, for 3,000 won to go along with the tour. And the guy pulls out this like pen, show him the pen, oh, pen thing. And it's hooked up to headphones. And I'm thinking, okay, how am I gonna know what to listen to? He pulls out this piece of paper. It's like a map. It's like a map. And he just touched the pen to wherever you are on the map and it started playing. And I was like, it's just like a piece of paper. Or you can touch it to a picture and it'll tell you about it too. That is like magic. I don't even know how it works. I don't either. So we've been living in the past our entire lives because apparently they have like electronic paper here. So <laughs> that's really cool. But we got an audio guide. So we're gonna fill you guys up with some facts here at the palace. We're very excited. This is gonna be really fun. It is. that this whole structure is the only two-story structure, original two-story actual, where you can go up in it from the whole complex. Um, and it's all made of wood, and it was like constructed in the late 1800s, so it's over 100 years old, all made of wood. It's pretty incredible. So behind me here is a really, really cool building. It's called Su Jung Jung. I think my pronunciation is probably bad, but it's the Hall of Scholars. And this is where they created the Hangul alphabet, which is the Korean alphabet that they still use to this day. I just think that's so cool. Previous to that, they had only used Chinese characters. So they created their alphabet in this building. Really gave the Korean people a form of identity through the medium of language. I just think that is so cool. An alphabet was written and created in this building. definitely opposites attract when it comes to most of the things we're interested in. We both love traveling obviously, but I really love historical, like deeply cultural things. Whereas Marsh is more into like modern sports, like really fun activities, like, um, I don't know, like skydiving or something like that. So we say that we like are like two pieces of a puzzle that fit together because then we get to do both things, both sides of things, whereas if we didn't have each other then maybe we would miss out on those things. But mm -hmm. this, this is my cup of tea.
we were just walking through like this kind of ancient, I don't, not even ancient, it's like an older part of like around the pagoda. And we were walking through this like little town, it's got little shops and stuff, and kind of showed what like older life was gonna be. Mm -hmm. Or older, what older life was. And we kept walking down a little bit, and there's like a outline for playing squid game, like that yeah. kids would actually play. The original like squid game court. And this is what it looks like. If you can see it all, but down there is like the head of the squid, the eyes of the squid, the body of the squid. Okay, so we want to keep you guys as informed as possible um, when we are traveling. And this is the first time we've ever gone into like a museum or something like that where I actually don't know if the audio guide was worth it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes audio guides can be like a little bit boring, but we tend to try to get them because most of the time we're just like staring at something and not really like sure what it is. So we do like to get them. So. We know, but I'm not 100% sure you needed it this time. I think you could just brush up on the history before you come and then just walk around and enjoy. Yeah, and some of it was kind of cool, the audio guide, but a lot of it was kind of hard to understand just because the Korean names are a little, they're difficult to keep straight what's what in your head, like as you're hearing this stuff, because a lot of it sounds very similar. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just kind of hard to track, a little long-winded. So I actually don't know if I'd get the audio guide if I came back. So just a little yeah. tip for if you come. And it's hindering us now because we have to go back to the entrance to turn it in and we have to walk like triple the distance. Yeah, if you go to the to the museum section, then to return your audio guide, you gotta go outside the palace and go all the way around and then you can return it. Yeah, or you just have to return it like at the main gate. Yeah, so a little inconvenient, but it's That's okay, because we're close to food. <laughs> finished at the Gyeongbokgung Palace and now we are going to walk over to the Insodong neighborhood to look for lunch and after that we will be exploring the Hanok traditional village. Yes, it's gonna be very fun. The palace was amazing, got more to see. Woo! Oh, look at this happy be Wait until you see where we're gonna go. favorite meals we've had here in uh, South Korea. It was Amy got some bibimbap, I got some beef, and it came with a bunch of sides. And we have clean plate club every single one of the dishes, so you can tell just from looking at our table, we like obnoxiously loved it. So it was so good, it was so delicious. I have a nice like 
spice burn in my mouth right now. The macchioli, the macchioli just like has relaxed me a little bit. And oh, it's just all of it is so good, but there is none left. We went to work on this. So this is our first time ever trying macchioli. We've been really excited to try it. It's like a Korean fermented rice wine. It's only about 5% alcohol. It can be a little bit more than that. So about like a beer. Um, and we were a little bit nervous to try it because I had heard it was a little sour and it is fermented. So I was wondering if the taste would be good, but it was amazing. It's like a little fizzy, almost like a little bit of a creamy taste, but sweet, but not overwhelmingly sweet. Like it just gives you like the perfect little warm feeling inside too. Like, I love it. to the ancient village. The big meal we had, it was really delicious, but it made me a little bit sleepy. So I stopped off for a black sugar uh, milk tea latte. Oh, let's double check. You got that. A black sugar bubble latte. So I got one of those, try and pep me up a little bit. We've wanted to try one the whole time, so. Hopefully get a little pep in the step. I love them, dude. So we are in the Bukchon Hanok village, which is a traditional village here in Seoul, meant to look like it did 600 years ago, although people are still living in these houses today, and you can actually come and stay here too yourself. But we're about to go explore all the nooks and crannies of Bukchon Hanok village. Let's go. Cool. Very cool. We're on like one of the main streets here and both sides are lined with traditional houses. It's also Hil kind of busy and hilly. Hilly. <laughs> Okay, so we can like perfectly see Namsan Tower, which to us really signifies Seoul because we've been able to see it out of our hotel window basically the whole time we've been staying here. So it's really cool to see it from the opposite side of the hill from this village. It's funny because it's like a traditional village, but you can still see like like subtle modern like modernizations to it, you know? Yeah. What's what? time on Marshall and Amy. We're exploring temples here in Bangkok and we're at Wat Tho. So this Buddha is the largest reclining Buddha in all of Thailand and it is just so beautiful and truly like all inspired. Everyone's just like huddled together, stranded with the reclining Buddha in this temple. Welcome to one temple in Bangkok, it's gotta be this one. Hey guys, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.